I'm Llewellyn Falco, the creator of Approval Test. In this episode, we're going to talk about testing WPF pages. Now, if you haven't already seen the episode on WinForms, I suggest you take a look at it first. Almost all the techniques that we're going to look at are almost identically the same, and I talk about the most common mistakes I see in testing views in general there. Other than that, these are going to look a lot the same, so let's dive in. As I mentioned at the end of the last episode, we're going to look at the technique of the model plus the view is going to equal the result. And the nice thing is, in WPF, it really encourages the view model pattern. And so, you're basically going to have a model already defined for you that if you put it with your view, is going to render you a result. When we left off last time, we had this test, which did exactly that. I'm going to copy it and pull it out a little bit more, and then we're going to use it for WPF. First, we had the form, and it's a little muddled here. So let's move it down. At the top, I'm going to create my model. And then down here, I'm going to create my view. Now, currently, this is a form. We're going to change it to a WPF. And instead of using this, use something called the main window. Well, this is a WPF form. I no longer need to set the model because it's inherent in the view model. I'm just going to pass in the existing one. And now that it's a WPF, it's no longer going to work with WinForm approvals, so instead we're going to have to use WPF approvals. As you can see, it's almost exactly the same as working with WinForms. Let's give this test a run. And here we are. X O X looking exactly like we want it to. Again, I can't move this over to approve it with Torus Diff, so I'm using the clipboard reporter as well so I can move it through a command line. Once that's done, I can run it again and it will pass. However, it's worth noting that sometimes line 40 it will not be allowed. Depending on how you're using your double WPF model, sometimes you just cannot create the WPF because it's not an STA thread. If that is the case, there's a simple workaround. I'm going to simply inline it right here and now wrap it as a lambda. Because it's wrapped as a lambda now, this does not create the code immediately. An approval test will actually throw the lambda into an STA thread so it can be created properly. There's one more thing to note when using WPF which is that it's being rendered using a lot of the capabilities of your graphics card. That produces a lot better image quality, but it leads to some weird side effects. Now, WPF will be consistent. I can run this again and again, and it will still pass. In fact, it will pass on multiple machines. However, if I change just a little something, there's a butterfly effect. For example, let's take this O and replace it with a lowercase o. When I run this, I expect it to fail. See, now it's a small O instead of a big O. It shouldn't have passed. However, if I was to move these images over and do a differential compare, I would have only expected the O to be different. As you can see, there's sort of a cascading effect that occurs on all the other lines and stuff. This is really common in WPF, and I'm not entirely sure why. It's useful to do, because it still tells you the bigger things, and then you can separate them out to figure out the nitty-gritty for yourself. As you can see, replacing it back to an O will get it to pass because these still run consistent. Well, that's all there is for WPF. Just remember to keep the model plus the view as all that you're testing. I'd like to close by highlighting Jason Malinowski. Jason came down to Orange County to talk about Visual Studio, a team that he's on at Microsoft, and I ended up harassing him quite a lot during his talk for both him and his partner. But it all worked out well. We ended up going to lunch and writing the majority of the approvals plugin for Visual Studio there. He also helped fix WPF when I was doing improper threading and waiting. You can find Jason on Twitter at Jason Malinowski. And as always, if you have any questions, tweet it with the hash approval test. I monitor that and will answer you promptly.